Hey guys. All right, guys, we're here today to talk about a Monomarth show with the Toronto stop, the one that we're going to pinpoint our discussion because that's the one that we went to. Yes. But before we get started, uh, I want to make this review quick because he's not feeling well. He wants to go to bed. But before we get started, I just want to say the reason why we're doing this and we're not showing you guys a vlog is because we didn't have a press pass for this show. Without the press pass, I cannot take my bag of goodies with my cameras and and well, my phones and my tripods and my yeah. microphones and my filters and my all my gear, my cables, my stuff, my Sport Billy bag. For those of you that grew up watching Sport Billy as a cartoon. A anyways, so we didn't have a press pass, so we couldn't take that stuff. And because we couldn't take that stuff, we couldn't do the vlog. And to that's, be honest, if that's we simple. Took that stuff, all it would have been broken. Yeah, all of it would have been destroyed. Yeah, all of it would have been destroyed. So maybe it was for a maybe it happened for a good reason. Yeah. So that's why we're sitting here and giving you the concert review old fashioned way. We I haven't done one of these since Demons and Wizards this summer, and that I, that was by myself with you. The last time we sat down to talk about it was Heavy Montreal uh, that long ago. All right, first band of the night, Grand Magus. First time for you listening to them, not first time for me. I mean, first time live because yeah. it was their first time in North America live. But I, I, I did an album review. They have a new album that came out this yeah. year. Really good band. W what did you think of them? They were a nice. Opener. Short set. Yeah, very, five songs. Very short set. Uh, they were a nice opener. I thought they were the perfect opener. Yeah. You know, like a, a little, a little old school heavy metal with a mix of rock and roll to it. The, the, their saw, so, their, their song, their sound is very raw. The the album that they released this year also has that same raw uh, aspect to it, so I really like it. Uh, they were entertaining. They were good. They got the crowd. Um, I would say they got the crowd started. Yeah. It was, it was a nice appetizer. It, it was uh, almost like having a little bit of deep fried calamari. Yeah. before you have your filet mignon. So it was really good. I really enjoyed their set. Five songs. That's as much as we got out of Grand Magus, but really, really good set. And it was uh, a pleasure to see these guys live. First time that they played North America, so yeah. so that's good. Uh, second band, At The Gates. First time for the two of us seeing At The Gates live. Because oh. we missed them when they came here with Behemoth. Uh, it was a 19 and over show. Yeah. You couldn't go and I couldn't go because I had to take you to guitar lessons. So both of us missed that show. What did you think of At The Gates? Oh, the, if Grand Magus was the appetizer. Yeah, the, uh, we already decided that it was the deep fry calamari. Yeah. These guys were like, you're kind of a side to your main, main meal. Oh, so like a, a large Caesar salad? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, some people would prefer the deep fried calamari, yeah, yeah. but okay, man. Right, I, but I, I, I get what you're saying. Because the, these guys, they kind of, you know, got the crowd a little bit started. They were they, hyped on stage, though. They were very hyped. They were good. I and, mean, the, was, they played the longest set of the night. They played nine songs. No, no I, actually, Mona Marth had the longest set. But but even they played longer. Uh, a longer than Archenemy. Yeah, yeah. Which Arch Enemy played before a lot of months, so that was kind of weird. Okay, but we'll talk about Arch Enemy when we get there. So concentrate on uh, At The Gate. So what did you think? But they were really, really good. Very good. They're, the lead singer was very hyped. Very hyped. Uh, I, I I love his stage presence. Always moving around. Always going side to side of the stage. Really getting the Taking crowd the going. Stand, using that as a, yeah, as a like his stage presence is absolutely unbelievable. Those guys are is what I would call an old school death metal band. They have that old school, well, they are an old school death metal band, but not only they are, they have the vibe of yeah. an old school death metal band. And he has a great stage presence, walking side to side of the stage, getting the crowd going, getting the crowd hyped. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. We got the set list yeah. for At The Gates. So uh, ripped straight out of the floor. So uh, that one is going in your room. That's a really cool set list to have. So anyway, so we got that. Then once they were done, they played nine songs. So Grand Magus, keep keep track of this. Nine Magus, five, at the gates, nine. Then comes Arch Enemy that only plays eight. Yeah. But eight epic songs, right? They played... Um, they, that was, okay, that was the... Uh, well, did they finish with Nemesis? They finished with Nemesis. Yeah, they finished with Nemesis. That was your meal. That was the filet mignon, okay? So what the hell is going to be a monomarth after? The dessert? <laughs> Okay, well, I'll wait to hear. So, okay, so they're the filet mignon. They're the filet mignon. They play. They, they played all my favorite songs. I mean, the, it was I don't like think the they played. Uh, did they play War Eternal? Yeah. Did they? I, I can't. I, so. can, I can't remember. I can't even remember. I mean, my brain is so messed up from all the 
the the the, the kicks, yeah. the boots that I got to my head during a, during a Mono March that I you don't got, even you got lucky. Uh, my Apocalypse, I know they they played that one for sure. The yeah. Eagle flies alone, they play that as well. Uh, it, this the the Arch Enemy set was very similar to the Arch Enemy set that we saw two years ago when they released their their they album, played, their latest album, a, when they played with Trivium. Yeah, they played the best stuff. Re I would say, I, I can't remember if they played War Eternal or not. They did. I think they did. Yeah. The only one they didn't play was Bloodstained Cross. The, the, if, they, the, if they played that, then I would say Greatest Hits. I agree. I agree. That, to me, is the only song that's missing in order to be an absolute Greatest Hit. Uh, Alyssa White Gloves, we saw them. We saw Arch Enemy with Trivium two years ago. Yeah, you, you were a wee lad. You were 13. Yeah. We were not in the pit for that show because I, I didn't think you could handle it. So we were actually in the balcony. This was our first time not only on the pit. We were on the railing. We were, we were the shield wall, right? Some of us more than others. We'll get into that when we get to Amora Mark. Uh, so this was my first time seeing them like really up and close. She has great energy. Yeah. Great energy, like all over the place. The only thing I noticed is the sound for them on the the vocals, the, the mic. It was not, not as good as Grand Magus or at the gigs. The volume on her mics, to me, it felt like it was a little bit lower. Yeah. So it, it was kind of getting, I don't know if the mic was lower or everything else was louder. But it, anyways, it was getting kind of drowned out by the sound. I felt that way compared to At The Gates and Grand Magus. For a Monomarth, I thought the volume was, was fine. There was no issues. But for Arch Enemy, I felt that the mic volume either was too low or everything else was too loud. Yeah. Either one or the other. Because I felt that she was getting drowned a few times. But great energy, great set. And 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 uh, at, at the end of Arch Enemy, I was talking to you and the, the guys around us, and I was like, wow, Ginger yesterday was a lot crazier. So far, like... Yeah, one yeah. or two crowd servers, yeah. not, nothing much. Also, like, from uh, our channel, we caught a, a... Oh, yeah, we got a, a guitar pick and a drumstick. Yeah. All right, so we rated Toronto, uh, not, not a Monomarth, we rated that show, because there's more to come. Um, but yeah, I was telling you, the Ginger show was a lot crazier, because I felt up up, up until the end of the end, uh, Arch Enemy set, you could move around, there was room, because we yeah. were taking turns at the front. I was at the front, he was behind me, and it was like three songs I was at the railing. Because you wanted to take pictures. Because I wanted to take pictures and video. Yeah. And then he would change with me and he would go to the front end. Oh, and we, we could do, do that though. We did do that. Uh, okay, so once the Monomarth came on, that was like, I was at the railing and that's how it stayed. The, because there's you know, no way we could have switched spots. If we switched spots, that's it. By the way, funny we thing. We lost a friend. We, <laughs> I was just going to say that. We lost a friend and we couldn't, I don't even think we looked for him. Uh, I think I show. need to do a tattoo of a tear. Yeah. Because I uh, we, we uh, maybe a, a little uh, hammer uh, hammer shaped yeah, tear. Yeah, yeah. I need to do a hammer shaped tear because our friend Mitchell, uh, who was at the railing, I, I don't know how this is even possible. How are you? At he the was railing? at the railing the whole show, and then when Amar Amar starts, he starts to digress back and back and back. But by, by the third song, I look back, I couldn't find him anymore. Which, I don't even know where he, he didn't is. Didn't grab onto anyone. I kept grabbing onto you because I fell like three times because. People were uh, shoving and trying to get their way. Tons of crowd surface too. Like oh. holy shit! Like, I, I think got kicked like five times. Uh, it was one, one time my hair got stuck in the guy's belt. <laughs> it was absolutely mayhem during him one of Marth. We lost a friend. Uh, I think by the end of the night he was in the toilet, uh, in the fetal position, crying. Because uh, uh, if there's one guy during this whole concert that, that wasn't able to hold the shield wall, was him. Yeah, we we lost him in the crowd. Like absolutely, uh, he should be ashamed of himself. Seriously, how do you start on the railing and finish the night on the toilet? Uh, I honestly, I, I don't know how you pulled that off. Um, we didn't. I, I hold on to that railing for dear life, and then you hold on then, to me for dear after life. After the show, this guy's like, it still wasn't as bad as Ginger. No, because you were at the railing. <laughs> I was behind you. It was worse than Ginger. Okay, but uh, no, no, it was. Worse. We talked about a uh, hard, hate, hate breed. breed, and it was worse than hate breed. Do you think so? I think it was, hate breed. I mean, hate breed. There was like in Montreal, the, the the at heavy heavy. Oh, not heavy that, Montreal. I'm talking about actual like when we went to go see okay. hate breed. Okay, because hate breed in Montreal was the worst. Yeah, craziest pit I've ever been in. Hate, when we went to go see hate breed. Like, one or two songs you could move around and you could actually, like, I filmed during Hate Breed. No, you could not use your phone during, uh, I mean, you could, but you would probably lose your phone. Our, another friend of ours lost his cell phone. Yeah, he found I, him I, later I on. had to call his phone because he lost his phone uh, during uh, Shield Wall. Was that when he lost his phone? Well, he was crowd surfing too. I mean, like, the guy, the guy had his the phone. The guy's like 25 years old. He looks like he's 12. 
you know what I mean? He, he's, he's got the body uh, of, of, of a little... Uh, I was going to say something really bad. <laughs> I'm not going to say it anymore. Anyways, he, he, he has the kind of body that Michael Jackson would absolutely fall in love with. I'm just going to say that. Oh. I'm just, I'm just going to say that. Um, I feel like that's even worse than whatever you were going to say. <laughs> I don't think so. I was gonna say something really bad. He looks my age. He looks younger than you. He's like twenty three. He looks 20. like me. And he him finished him. university this year, and he, he looks, looks like, like me and him would have came to the show together as like friends. He, he looks like the two of you would have false IDs to get to the show. That's what <laughs> yeah. it would look like. Uh, you actually look older than him. But anyways, um, Amon Amarth was absolutely epic. No, we talked about Arch Enemy being a greatest hits. Amon Amarth was a greatest oh, hits. Amon Are you kidding me? It was a greatest hits from the new album they played. Uh, Fafner's Gold, Raven's Flight, uh, Shield Wall. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm, there's one more that they played. They, they, I think they played four, if I'm not mistaken. Their set was 12 songs. If I'm not mistaken, there was Shield Wall, Fafner's Gold, uh, Raven's Flight. There was a Crack, fourth. Uh, Crack the Sky. Crack the Sky. That's the one. Crack the, so those were the four that they played from the new album, if I'm not the, mistaken. Uh, one that you actually didn't know going in, Wave the, uh, the Wave of the Viking. No, I knew that song. Oh, you knew that song? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know it's you one of their more popular songs. I really knew that song. All right. So it was the greatest hits. Like, honestly, like uh, Pursuit of Viking, uh, Twilight of the Thunder God was the song that they closed the concert with. They started with the Raven's Flight. They closed it with Twilight of the Thunder God. Uh, I already said Pursuit of Vikings. They had, they had uh, um, fights on Guardians stage. of Asgard. Yeah, what, what, what did you think of the dragon, the blow-up dragon at the at the end? That was epic. I know. That was really I, cool. I'm, I was more interested in the fight. The fight on stage, that was amazing. Yeah, it was almost like... Was uh, like medieval times. Yeah, dinner and tournament, minus the dinner, just with a tournament. And now, it, it also felt a little bit like Deadliest Warrior. Yeah. It was just that it was Viking versus Viking. It would have been, it would have been funnier if they did uh, um, Ironside. English side. Oh, and have one of those Viking guys been been Ironside? Ironside. That that's the only song. I mean, if there was one song, okay, if there's one song that I would like to see on that set list, Ironside. make it thirteen instead of twelve and include Ironside. That song is so epic. But anyways, the fact that they played Shield Wall, I mean, uh, it would be impossible for them to do a show without yeah. playing that song. That song is so good live. And they didn't absolutely. Do what, they didn't do what I thought they would do. What the, uh, wall, the wall of death? death. I know. Another that, another missed opportunity. opportunity. Yeah. Another missed opportunity. We we should work for their marketing team or or whatever. I'm uh, I'm I'm willing to do that. And we, thought, way, we thought the uh, the drum set was a boat, but it's actually just a big. No, helmet. it's the big uh, helmet. The yeah. horns or the helmet. I actually I, the, the, when it was covered, I thought it was a boat. Me too. But anyways, it was just a it was just a horny helmet. Uh, and, and people gave us it, okay, it's a horny helmet. All right, Amana Marth had a horny helmet as their drum uh, stage thing. Yeah. People gave us shit for posting a video of Bjorn and Floki when they were they were wearing like Viking horns, and they said that those two douchebags were now wearing traditional Viking helmets because the real Vikings did not have horns. Where are all of you now sending hate mail to freaking Amonamar for putting a horny helmet on stage? Where, yeah. where, where are you guys? Where is the hate mail? That's what I would like to know. We got hate mail. It was not even us. Yeah. It was those two douchebags. And that they haven't shown up in a long time. Yeah, they haven't done a video I since. know. They haven't shown up in a long time. No, they did one. They did one for Sabaton. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, what was it? Uh, in the army now. Mm. Yeah. Maybe they went to the army and they never returned. <laughs> you know, maybe they're prisoners of war. POWs. We have to send Chuck Norris to get them. Anyways, to finish off this this concert review, uh, we also got two guitar picks from Amon Amarth in the set list. I, I got the set list. In the set list. So... We we had a good we had a good haul in total th three guitar picks two set lists and one drumstick. The only band that we didn't get anything from was Grand Magus. We just got a good performance. Yeah, yeah that's good enough. All right, great night, great show. First time seeing a Monomarth. I'm gonna I'm gonna sleep with a smile on my face. And then wake up with a sore throat. Yes, and I have a by the way I have an interview tomorrow uh, with uh, Mr. Nilo from Insomnium. So in the next couple of days you guys are gonna be seeing an interview. Talk about the new album, so hopefully I'll have a voice to ask him questions. Otherwise, it's going to be a very, a very uh, interesting interview. Yeah. All right, guys. On that note, come back tomorrow. We'll have more videos for you. It, it won't be that interview. That interview is going to take a couple of days because I have to edit it and fix it and whatever. Uh, but it's coming up. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow in our next video. All right. See you guys. See you.